Hello and welcome back to the Fencing Referee YouTube channel. My name is Lisa Campisapri and I can be found right here, so subscribe. I can also be found on TheFencingRef.com, The Fencing Ref on Instagram, and The Fencing Referee on Facebook. So here we are talking about Epe 101 because Epe is so simple and that's why it's taking so many videos to figure it out. This is about when a fencer presents their weapon to be tested. I, as the referee, need to have some sort of regular process that I always follow. Some people will say that you have to start behind the fencer. Are they hooked in behind? Are they hooked in in front? Then you test the blade. For me, I started at the tip and I worked my way all the way back to the machine. You heard that right. I start at the tip and I work my way all the way back to the machine. I start at the tip. If the, if the barrel is loose, there is no annulment. That is considered their responsibility. I don't know if you've ever heard when you tap a blade with another blade and there's a hollow sound, it means one of the barrels is loose. It's a weird rattling sound. And that means that the barrel is loose and that means no annulment. So they present loose barrel. You happen to notice there's a tip screw missing, still no annulment. So they present their blade to you. They have to directly present their blade. They can't have like been fiddling with it, bending it vigorously. They can't have been pulling on the cord. They have to directly present it to you. They can't have like bent it really hard like this. No, they have to present it to you. If they do an open palm to press the tip and they're like, oh, I have no light and you see that they've done nothing to the system and then they present it to you. I will do also that with a very, very gentle depressing on their foot. I might test it and annul it because I don't think they did anything. But if they flick it onto their foot, uh, -uh that can change and break a wire. So they present it to me, no wiggles. Okay, great. I look down the wire. Are there any obvious wires popping out that maybe were sticking up and got caught? No. I look here to see that there is nothing major in here happening. Is there a wire popping out that they might have done with their fingers? Uh, is their fastener closed? If their fastener is open, just like I just found this, and it's unplugged, this is considered their fault, not an annulment. But let's say the fastener is closed. I now look behind. Is the fastener closed behind and is it hooked in? Sometimes I will say, stay right here. And if I've seen that the reel is moving and I say, don't move, sometimes the reel is moved out of the floor cord. I walk over, I see the floor cord is not attached. I now can annul that touch because the floor cord wasn't attached. But you have to give specific instructions to stay to the, to the fencer because if that floor cord is in, I now look at the floor cord and I make sure it's in at the box. I now then take the weapon. I've given myself a few splinters with this. I hold on to it very firmly and I depress the tip so much so that I make a little mark on my palm. Some people say, advocate that you take it at the guard and you depress it till it bends, again, making the mark. That's a long process. But I don't understand, Lisa. Refing epi is easy. Not so much. So, shorthand. No wiggles, keep testing. No obvious wires popping out. No obvious wires popping out. It's fastened. It's fastened behind them. The reel looks like it's in place. It looks like it's perfectly in place. It looks like it's into the box. I take the weapon by the guard or by the blade. I depress it and I bend the blade so that it will cause a light to go on. If there is no light at this point, it is no touch. If all of those other things were correct. If there is a light, touch stands and you keep moving on. All right. That's how I do it. You might start from the back and go to the front. There are quirky rules about the back that if the fastener is in place, but the body cord winds its way out, you don't annul and blah, blah, blah. Read those rules on your own time. For me, I'm going to assume that the fastener, if, if it's unplugged in the back, is faulty, and I would annul that. It depends on the rules. It depends on the level of the tournament. It depends on whether or not there's a closing clip on there. You read the rules and you tell me your opinion on whether or not you think that should be an annulment.
There we go. The Fencing Referee YouTube channel. This is what you're watching and thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to find me on Instagram and on Facebook. Take care now. Two good things about yourself every day. Bye-bye.